Video problem number six, we have uh, two problems now, both on specific heat capacity or using specific heat capacity. Let's get started. Determine the change in temperature, so we're looking for the delta T of a 25.6 gram chunk of aluminum. So my mass is 25.6 grams. Uh, it gives me the specific heat capacity of aluminum. That's equal to 0 0.897, that's joules per gram degree Celsius. If 235 joules of energy are removed, so my Q is equal to negative 235 joules because they're being removed, so I'm giving that off, so that's going to be a negative because I'm going to end up with less energy than what I started out with. So I'm still going to use Q is equal to M shot, Q equals M S H delta T or M C delta T. Uh, we're solving for delta T, so let's get that by itself, Q over M S H is equal to delta T. So let's plug and chug. Negative 235 joules divided by my mass, which is 25.6 grams, times my specific heat capacity, which is 0 0.897 joules per gram degree Celsius. That's going to be equal to delta T. Delta T in Celsius, delta T in Kelvin is going to be the same value. Uh, the actual temperature will be different, but the delta T is going to be the same. So let's see what we get here. We've got negative 235 divided by the product of 25.6 and 0.897. So I get a value of negative 10.23. Uh, looks like I've sh I should have three sig figs, so I'm going to say negative 10.2 degrees Celsius. That's my delta T. Does that make sense? If we're removing energy, should the temperature go down? Absolutely, that makes sense. Joules cancels out, grams cancels out. I end up with delta uh, degrees Celsius, so that looks good. Move on to the next one. A 53 milliliter sample of ethanol. So now that that's volume, and here I'm given the density of that ethanol. Density is 0 0.789 grams per milliliter, and I'm told the specific heat capacity of that ethanol, which I'm going to call ETOL right there. Uh, it's 2.46 joules per gram degree Celsius. It absorbs 1,200 joules, so if it's going to, going to absorb 1,200 joules, that's going to go up in energy, so positive 1,200 joules. Determine the change in temperature, so I'm looking for delta T again. Now, the only thing I don't have, if I look at my Q equals M shot, I don't have mass. So I'm going to use the volume and density to figure out mass. So I'm going to do that problem just over here, and I'll do it down here. So I'm going to say density is equal to mass over volume. I'm looking for mass, so density times volume is equal to mass. My density is 0.789 grams per milliliter. My volume is 53 oops, milliliters. And that's going to equal my mass, so 0.789 times 53. And so I get a mass of 41. 0.817, and I don't want to round that yet because that's not my final answer. So I'm solving this one again for delta T, so I'm going to use Q over M S H. So I'm going to have 1200 joules over my mass, which I determined was 41.817 grams, and then my specific heat capacity is 2.46. And that's going to equal my delta T. So it's going to be 1200 divided by the product of 41.817 times 2.46. And so I get a value of 11.7. If I'm going to three sig figs, should I be going to three sig figs? That's four sig figs, but those values, there's two sig figs. So it looks like I should actually be going to two sig figs because it's a 53 milliliter sample. So that's going to be 12. So my calculator says 11.6667, and I'm going to take it to 12 to have two sig figs, and it's delta T degrees Celsius. That makes sense. Let's see, I absorbed energy, my temperature goes up. Yeah, that makes sense. 